Thank you, Cameron, for the warm introduction. Um, I'm Lely. I'm very glad to be here and um, uh, talk about some of the recent work uh, uh, our group is uh, working on um, on the responsibility or uh, trustworthiness of the large language model. So probably um, most of you heard about the uh, chat GPT and large language model. Uh, these all big companies, uh, Google, Meta, OpenAI, or uh, uh, Anthropic, they have their uh, released their, their API access. And uh, I hope uh, many of you are trying this. But if you don't, you can also use uh, these uh, open source models like Llama, Alpaca, Vicuna, et cetera. All these models provide a wonderful capability and um, even completing some daily tasks like this. Um, I was uh, using ChatGPT uh, yesterday. I just asked ChatGPT to create a tweet for me for the talk, for today's talk. And here's the generation of ChatGPT. I would say it's it's wonderful. I, I did I didn't change anything here. Hi, <laughs> Jason. It's it's wonderful. It's much better than my own writing. I I, I can't really come up with uh, this uh, funny and uh, nice uh, um, tweets. So well, for those of you who don't really know about the secret power of large language model, so how does this large language model get the power? The power is actually from uh, some task we perhaps we, we, we perform when we were uh, very young to just to predict the next word, just generate the next word. For example, Santa Barbara has very nice we have beach, we have weather. <laughs> we don't have snow. Yeah, so uh, yeah, every, everyone in Santa Barbara knows this. So Pittsburgh is the city of well, for those you who don't know, we have a lot of bridges. We have over a hundred bridges. Yeah, we don't we don't have that much corn. So yeah, so this task is uh, well easy for even for kids. But um, it turns out uh, if we train models to predict the uh, next word and train them on very large data, like uh, three hundred billion tokens uh, um, for ChatGPT, and with some small and um, uh, human supervision, uh, it, this model can do very well. And it, it gains an uh, amazing probability, like the prompting, it, it can easy to adapt to new tasks uh, through natural language uh, instruction, even if uh, the model is not trained on that task. Uh, it can also do that through in-context learning. If you give a few examples, uh, just uh, maybe 10 examples uh, to illustrate what is the task, what is the expected labels, uh, uh, then the model is can already do that uh, very well. But uh, these models can also be used for malicious purpose to maybe creating fake news, fraud, scams. Uh, there was a report earlier this year, and uh, New York lawyers, they just used ChatGPT to write the legal argument on court. And they actually use a case on, on court. It turns out this ChatGPT generate a few fake cases. They are, they are not really real uh, cases that happened before. And and uh, well, that seemed personally bad, and they were also uh, fined for that. And also, it creates a huge problem uh, for our education as well. It's very difficult uh, to identify whether the, the essay is actually written by uh, students or actually generated by chatbot. And well, for our professors, it's a challenging job. We really have to come up with a way, well, in the summer, in the past summer, to come up with a way to handle all these assignments. And you can do it wrong. So there, there was a professor, this, uh, this is a real case. Uh, last uh, semester, there was a professor at TAMU. Uh, he probably doesn't understand the, the mechanism of ChatGPT. So he just asked ChatGPT itself to tell whether this essay is written by a human or uh, generated by ChatGPT. 
and it gets all wrong. So it's very annoying and uh, where you can lead to bad consequences. There are other uh, uh, issues uh, for a large language model. For example, if you pre-train this large language model, even if you pre-train it on public data, it may contain some sensitive information. For example, your, your email, your phone number, your uh, physical address, or even more seriously, your social security number. So those are the unintentional memorization. And if you fine-tune this model on your uh, private data, it might more likely to contain such private information as well. Uh, another aspect is uh, copyright. Um, so there, there, there's an, an uh, attack called a model extraction attack. Uh, you, you, uh, you can actually uh, use distillation as a method to distill these uh, uh, models uh, through their API, for example. And, Alpaca, Vicuna, all these models are actually still from ChatGPT. Although OpenAI is okay with that, probably. Uh, but uh, uh, many other companies, organizations, uh, they, they do want to protect uh, their copyright uh, or ownership of the model. Uh, they don't want uh, a third party to uh, just distill and copy their model. And a large language model can also generate unsafe uh, text. Uh, so if you use it uh, for medical purposes, uh, sometimes it will, can give some uh, uh, incorrect information or, or even unsafe uh, suggestions uh, for, for the patients. So here's a, a real case I encountered myself in my class. Uh, uh, in my class, we, we have late days for the homework. So. Uh, uh, and that's accumulative. So uh, we actually have to calculate uh, individual late days for each of the students. That's tedious. So our, our TA just used ChatGPT to calculate the total number of late days for each student. And it does almost right. We checked a few uh, initial answers. It's right. So we are happy with that. We just submit the result until one student complained to me. Actually, we, we calculated wrong and we, we, we gave the wrong grade. So it can be when, uh, even if we are, we are expert, you can generate uh, some um, incorrect answer if you are not uh, aware of that. So in today's talk, I will talk about uh, uh, two work. Uh, uh, on this uh, responsibility aspect of a large language model. The first one is to detect uh, AI generated text. And the second one is to protect the model so that um, if the third party want to distill from it, we, we can uh, tell, we can identify. Okay, let's start with the first one. So this is, uh, a uh, small uh, paragraph uh, about Baltimore. Can you tell whether it's written by human or generated by AI? Right? So it's very difficult. So well, one solution is perhaps we can train a machine learning model to identify this. But unfortunately, all existing detector based on classify or machine learning uh, methods and uh, all fail. They can lead to very high um, false positive and false negatives as well. I'm showing some of the results here. Uh, they are uh, 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 false detection rate. So they can be very high. So classifier based approach uh, doesn't uh, uh, work very well. It's not very robust. The other solution is um, so we can add some watermark, just like uh, uh, we add some watermark to the image. Actually, it turns out that uh, this, this uh, method of watermarking uh, has been studied uh, for decades for image and you can even inject invisible watermarks. So 
this watermark, you won't be able to tell. This is the original and the watermark. You won't be able to tell uh, from the pixels. But there are some invisible messages. Uh, there are uh, signal processing uh, to, uh, techniques uh, to identify those. So that's good for image. What about text? Can we add some watermark to text as well so that we we will be able to detect such kind of uh, secret signal uh, from the text. Well, let's uh, let's try. So here's one idea. Right. So this is a piece of a poem by uh, Walt Whitman. We can just add this. Literally, add this uh, this text there. This is a. a, a Direct text, of course, you can remove that. It's it's very easy, right? You can you can modify. Let's try a uh, second time. So can you tell the secret message here? So this is a piece of uh, a small article generated by ChatGPT. Actually, I just asked ChatGPT to generate uh, yesterday. And uh, as you notice there, the secret message here, it's uh, more difficult to uh, identify if you don't pay, really pay attention. And if you don't really align them well, you probably won't notice this uh, message. This is better, but still it's on the surface level. Uh, so you, you, pay, you pay some attention, you, you, you can notice it and you can modify it. So, Watermarking the uh, digital text is uh, uh, difficult. And our goal is we want to find some subtle but uh, distinctive pattern deliberately within the content so that uh, later we are able to detect this uh, secret message. Um, and if we can do it uh, properly, if we can add this uh, secret message tailored to individual uh, language model, then we can even tell whether this piece of text is generated by, by a particular model or even by a particular user of that model. So this approach is dramatically different from uh, previous classifier-based uh, detectors. So uh, here, watermark, actually, we can prove uh, whether this uh, uh, text is from um, the model or not. While well, classifier-based approach is trying to predict. So those are two different uh, approach. And what are needed for a good watermark? Well, obviously we want the watermarked text to achieve the same quality as unwatermarked, as, as a raw generation from the uh, language model. And we also want to achieve high uh, uh, detection rate, uh, meaning that uh, the, the detection will make no false positive. It won't catch any uh, human written, actually human written text. And you won't, th there will be no false negative you won't miss any large language model or AI generated text. And we also want robustness or security guarantee. So it should be robust to an um, adversary attack or any ways to evade this uh, detection. And I will show you examples of how to evade uh, even with our own watermark scheme. Well, this robotics is needed even if there's no explicit evasion attack. Because people won't just directly use a, a generated text. If you are still you use a chat GPT to generate essay for you, probably you won't just direct copy, right? You, you will modify, you will make some edits or cropping, et cetera. So the, the result is slightly different from the original generation. And once you do this uh, edit, uh, if we have some watermark in the original tag, uh, probably this watermark will be destroyed. So how can we uh, protect this uh, watermark? So that even if 
users are modifying the text, we are still able to catch that. So let's uh, uh, revisit the language model. So um, as I mentioned earlier, so the large language model tries to predict the next word given the prompt and the um, prefix uh, generation. And for example, here we have uh, some of the words from the uh, dictionary and we can calculate uh, their uh, logits through the neural network. And we can turn these uh, logits into probability by normalizing them. So well, how to add the watermark? The key idea here is we can, uh, we can slightly modify the probability uh, uh, in, uh, by modifying their logits uh, so that we, uh, this modification uh, on a small signal can be detected later. So here's the idea. Uh, we propose this algorithm called a GPT watermark. Uh, we still have the same prompt here. We want to generate the next token. Uh, before generation, we randomly split uh, all the words in the vocabulary into two groups. We, we call it, this is random generation. Uh, we call it uh, one group is a green list, the other is a red list. So this splitting is based on uh, a hash function. And then now we are generating the next token. So we, we have a lot of choice. Of, uh, we can, uh, well, these choice are, are already grouped into either green or red. And we calculate their logits. That's a direct calculation from the large language model. And for every word, for every token in the green list, we add a small amount of information here. We add, we add a small data here. And, and it's universal. It's, a, it's a some constant we pick. So once we add that, we normalize the probability again. So it's the same thing. It's a, and then once we have the probability, we perform the normal decoding. We can, we can use Bing search, we can use diverse Bing search, we can, or we can just use uh, sampling, whatever. Uh, so after that, we, prove, we increase the probability of these uh, green tokens slightly. And we, uh, in, the, in the meanwhile, we decrease the probability of the red tokens slightly. But we, we only make a small change so that it won't affect the generation quality too much. So that's the key idea. So the algorithm is a, a pretty simple. It's perhaps just a one or two lines of uh, modification to the existing um, algorithm for decoding and it applies to any language models. Okay, so well, uh, more formally, uh, here's the uh, details of the algorithm. We partition uh, this vocabulary into a, a green list and red list based on the secret uh, uh, watermark key. And we apply this uh, large language model to get the probability uh, logit vector. And we slightly modify by adding this small data to the logits uh, for the tokens to the blue uh, list, in the green list. That's it. So how can we detect such signal? Well, detection turns out uh, it's also uh, very straightforward. We just count the number of tokens. So now let's say we, we get a, a text, we get a sentence here, we compute the Z score. Z score is defined by this formula here. Why here is uh, the number of tokens belongs to the uh, green list. We just count that number. And, and this is a normalized estimation of the uh, Z uh, statistics. And we set a threshold. Uh, if the, the score is above certain threshold, we uh, 
we manually set that uh, threshold tau, then it's uh, uh, watermarked. Otherwise, uh, it's non-watermarked. So it's a very simple rule, statistical rule to test that. And uh, let's see one example and um, what, what really happens behind the scene. Um, here's, here's one, one example. So uh, we are using Lama model and uh, this Lama survey billing model. Uh, so here's a prompt for the for Lama. Can I succeed after many failures? Okay, the Lama is generating a response. <laughs> So this response, if you directly count the number of green tokens and red tokens, because we, we randomly split based on hashing. So our hashing function actually ensure that uh, normally you will get 50-50 split of the green red tokens. So after watermark, so this is a text uh, after we apply the watermark, it's the same prompt. And uh, now the number of green tokens significantly increase. And the number of uh, red tokens uh, significantly decrease. So if you compute the, uh, this score here, this is this score here, it's uh, much higher uh, than uh, this uh, unwatched market. So then the, there's a, a significant difference uh, between the watermark and unwatermark in terms of the Z statistics. So we are able to identify actually this bottom one is generated by a large language model, by LAMA model. And we provide a mathematical uh, guarantee uh, uh, for a set of mathematical guarantees uh, for this watermark method um, regarding the uh, quality um, of the watermark, uh, we can prove that the watermarked uh, large language model and the original unwatermarked uh, large language model, they are indistinguishable. Sorry, indistinguishable in what sense? I mean, they're designed so that they're distinguishable. Yeah, uh, indistinguishable in the sense of um, distribution. So if you measure them, let's say, uh, you, can, you can use uh, uh, any uh, statistical measure, but uh, uh, so one metric is, uh, for example, KR divergence. We can measure the KR divergence between the two. And this uh, difference will be uh, smaller than some threshold. And the second uh, one is uh, detection rate. So uh, we, we also have guarantee on the type one error and type two error. So basically uh, this uh, false positive rate and the false negative rate, they uh, will approach uh, to almost a zero um, exponentially as uh, and gets larger. We do need some uh, additional assumption. I, I will talk about uh, this assumption and the condition uh, in a minute. And it's also probably robust to edits. So if you use ChatGPT and you suppose this uh, is already watermarked and you just make a few edits yourself, that will probably destroy the watermark. And we make the guarantee so that if you make small uh, number of edits, if you don't like complete change the whole thing, we are still able to catch that watermark. And it's it's uh, twice as robust as a recent notable uh, baseline from uh, uh, University of Maryland uh, Kitchen Bar uh, School uh, work uh, this year in ICML. Uh, so well, back to your question. So quality constraint, uh, we can actually uh, prove that uh, for any input. Uh, um, uh, that's a context vector uh, for the uh, for the decoder. Uh, for any input, uh, 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 we can prove that the watermarked one, which is the p hat here, and the unwatermarked one, uh, the original p here, as a, a maximum dif uh, difference between the two, is smaller some, uh, than some threshold. 
and it's bonded. So there's a particular choice if we choose uh, this alpha to be one, so that becomes a chaos divergence. That's that's a usual. So basically, we we bound the ways that it's original and probability generated by original language model and watermark ones. They don't differ too much. And uh, here's a one analysis. Uh, we we are comparing um, this uh, water uh, well our watermark approach is called a uh, DBT watermark and uh, also uh, fishing balls uh, watermark approach uh, uh, on different models so DBT two and the uh, llama model. Uh, let's see. I think this this one actually has a quality of the model. So the, the lower is the better. So what we want to prove is uh, after watermark. These two are after watermark. This one is on watermark. And this is human. We want to make sure this watermark one are close to the on watermark one. So yeah, for OPT and Lama, it, it, it's pretty close. So GPT-2, there's some gap. It appears that there's a couple that are just like really outliers that are really skewing things. Do you have any idea or analysis what those are? Uh, okay, very interesting observation. Uh, their, their complexity is much higher. Right. Uh, yeah. I have to look at the, those individual cases. But yeah, I was wondering yeah. if there's some consistent yeah. yeah. Uh, well, we can talk about that uh, uh, offline. Yes, yeah, that would be very interesting. Oh, another aspect is the robustness. We also analyze uh, uh, this adversary scenario where uh, this adversary can make edits. Right? We, we want to bound the effort. Uh, of course, if, uh, if let's say if a human spend a lot of time just uh, edit the generated text completely, it would uh, completely destroy the watermark. But that means maybe the, the human actually put the effort in the creation so that they, they can claim this is actually written by a human. But if, but if they only change a few words, uh, then we will still be able to detect that. As long as the uh, added distance is uh, and, and below some threshold we set, then we can still uh, detect that. Yes. So you, you may be about to talk to this, but uh, the way I was thinking about removing watermark is off the larger X. Uh, I guess it's out of it, but if that's your next slide, then I guess it's <laughs> I don't, I don't know have that, but maybe you can. Elaborate. So, I mean, like the most obvious, I thought about these issues a couple of years ago also. Uh, and I <laughs> I didn't think it was possible to have a robust watermark because even if uh, all of the large language model providers, uh, you know, agreed to use the same watermark, there would be some black market, uh, one maybe not smaller, which was capable of doing paraphrase uh, and would remove the watermark. And in uh, the case of a strong adversary here that knows the green list, you can paraphrase and say, ah, when a word is on the green list, uh, I will just copy it. And when it is, uh, uh, I'm sorry, when a word is on the red list, I'll just copy it. Uh, and when it's on the green list, uh, I'll resample a new word from a modified version of the distribution. Exactly. That's a, that's a great example of the adversary pack. Those are stronger ones. We do have some uh, experiment on the paraphrasing uh, the synonym replacement, uh, well, that involves some effort. So un unless you are replacing, well, as I showed earlier, so we have we have a lot of uh, green words. Unless you replace every word, uh, and then otherwise it, it, it's it's uh, it's still uh, it's easier easy to detect the, uh, from the these statistics. Okay, basically we want to make sure that the, the adversary needs to make enough, a sufficiently large number of edits to evade detection. Yes. When you're defining this edit distance, is it in terms of the model-based tokens that you're allowed to modify, or is it based on like the final yield of string? Uh, yeah, the uh, edit distance is based on the tokens, number of tokens, yeah. 
Any other question? That's a very good question. Uh, About the quality, we, are, we do we do have additional, uh, actually, I think maybe next slide. We, we, we do have some uh, experimental results regarding the quality of the watermarked model and the uh, original model. And in terms of the uh, like the sequence, we, we detect on the sequence level. We don't detect on the individual word level. It, it's it's hard to do that, and we do have some modest requirement of the sequence length, uh, around maybe um, two hundred tokens. So if it's a very short sentence, like um, you, if you only have ten words in the sentence, it's hard to do that. I have a question about the actual usage of this kind of requirement. So suppose I'm a teacher, I want to see if my students using chat to be but I don't have the game to spread. Is there is OpenAI going to have some service where I can query it? Is that how it's going to work? That's a great, great question. So who provides this uh, watermark and uh, uh, detection service? Right now, this is uh, uh, actually only the uh, model owner uh, knows the uh, secret message and watermark and uh, being able to detect that. Um, we, I think that's, that would be a very interesting Research question in the future, can we develop something like the public uh, private uh, key idea, like you, know, you, can, you can have public detector and but still have private message. But it shouldn't be too hard to crack that. I mean, if you just generate a lot of text and look at the distribution of words, how it differs from the normal distribution of words. Yeah. Right, that's a, that's a good observation, yes. So one limitation which I mentioned, so of our, our GP, uh, GPT watermark model is it's actually easier to identify this green list versus red list. Uh, but again, even if you know the green list and red list, uh, we so we can still have the watermark there. We'll, we'll still be able to detect that. Any other question? Okay. Thank you for this wonderful question. Um, and uh, well, how to detect? So here's a, so we talk about quality, but the, the detection rate is actually based on the z-score. So here's, here's a z-score comparison. Uh, this is a watermark and unwatermark and human. And this, uh, we actually have the human written text. So if, you, if we compute the Z score, this unwatermark and the human, they are uh, pretty close uh, for different models. Uh, well, dramatic different uh, for watermark one. So that's a, a basis for our detection. And uh, so you were asking about the outlier. So there, there, was, there can be some outlier. We, have, we do have some additional analysis. Um, so this is one. Um, if you ask uh, when ChatGPT two there is the least kind of dummy tasks. Uh, well, it, it's not a really high entropy text. It's a very really low entropy. It doesn't contain much information. So this is actually this would be bad. Uh, but we we do assume uh, and the tags, the generated tags are kind of high quality, natural and diverse. So, which means they usually they are uh, high entropy. So uh, then we can modify, right? For low entropy case, it, it's actually actually harder. Sorry, the danger here is that uh, this is not watermarked, but if goal is on the green list, it might want to watermark. Yeah, well, the, the, the danger is if you change one, 
if it's so either you change one or you change the whole. And and then the, the, there's the issue. So you can easily no, no, notice or you can easily know it's it's not actually uh, uh, real or yeah, it's it's a fake or yeah. So that's a danger. So we, we, so to make the theorem to work properly, we we do assume that the, it's a kind of diverse text that generated by large language model. And the, with the second one is um, we also assume that uh, we call it the homophily uh, condition, which means uh, uh, if we uh, predict the uh, probability uh, and for uh, actually, distribution proportion of the uh, 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 word uh, next token uh, belonging to uh, green or red, they are more or less the same for every position. If they are dramatically different, then that will be an issue. And this condition can be satisfied if you choose a like, truly random hash hashing function. Uh, if you don't choose it well, whereas Occasionally, if, and, and depending on the prompt. So, if you have this bigger prompt, and uh, it will kind of have some long range dependency, so this uh, information is actually entailed uh, in the generated text, then you are gradually reduce uh, your chance of getting a particular group of tokens. For example, you, uh, in the end, maybe that. Only the green list of tokens can be generated, then it will be a problem. Okay, uh, back to the uh, quality versus uh, uh, detection rate. And so, uh, so I'm talking about the detection rate. And so, this is a, this is a quality comparison uh, of the watermarked one and the unwatermarked one are uh, pretty close. And we're comparing to prior approach. So uh, Kirchenbauer's uh, approach uh, at ICML this year. So our watermark algorithm, it's actually uh, pretty much similar to uh, Kirchenbauer's, uh, except their watermark depends on the prefix. So we have universal uh, separation of the green list and the uh, red list. And with that, we can set up all these uh, theoretical guarantee. And and uh, and the robustness result as well. Okay. Uh, well, we do have some human evaluation of the generated text after watermark. So the, uh, so we we invite a human annotator to rate the generated text um, for our llama model. So this is a watermark and unwatermark. In terms of distribution of the rating, they are pretty much similar. And now back to Jason's question of paraphrasing attack. So, well, apparently we can we can do paraphrasing, and this paraphrasing is not necessary by human. We can even use another model to do the paraphrasing, where we can ask a chat GPT to paraphrase. Uh, we we can do other like direct uh, paraphrasing model. Uh, we can we can even use uh, like summarization models such as a bar to, uh, to rewrite. Yeah. And uh, well, we, we, have, we have some uh, preliminary study even under this paraphrasing and editing attack. It uh, well, empirically it shows that uh, still uh, after watermark, we, uh, we are even after the attack, we are able to uh, identify these watermarks. So it won't be very easy to uh, evade this watermark. Wait, sorry, but the, the uh, particular moves that you use that were not rewrite the whole thing, right? Not to rewrite the whole thing, yeah. Do, do you have uh, results on that? Rewrite the whole thing? Rewrite the whole thing either. So, just to repeat what I was saying before, but there's a, I, I, I got a little wrong. Yeah. Before. It's just uh, you have a prompt, um, you know, rewrite rewrite the preceding text. Um, and then when you decode, uh, so when it rewrite yeah. the preceding text, copying, yes. Uh, yes. you know, mo mostly copying or something, uh, and then just give enough of a boost 
uh, to the uh, right, right. So that, yeah, if we have some other uh, like more advanced models for writing, for example, VAE. So if we use VAE, it might, it might um, potentially write the whole thing. Uh, we don't have a result for that, but uh, that's a very interesting, yeah, and a very challenging case as well to, yeah, to still protect this watermark. Uh, and it, it's it, this is. Uh... Another way that you could do it, I guess, uh, is something like train uh, paraphrase model, like with punch. So control generation, you might want to avoid triggering a rudeness detector, and you might also want to avoid triggering a watermark detector. And so that will just naturally learn how to look ahead and doing the copying to avoid doing it. Yeah, exactly. so you've got two rewards uh, when you're training punch. One is uh, uh, edit distance or you know some other similarity metric uh, uh, being small, and the other is avoid triggering a watermark. Yeah, exactly, yeah. Yeah, we will see how 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 that go. But one one, I can see one issue here is uh, well, our, our our watermark is it's not actually training based, so we don't have a training module. So, but probably we can we can put it into uh, this adversary learning uh, uh, framework so that it can improve even uh, in the presence of this adversary water uh, adversary envisioning attack. Okay. Um, the other issue with this, well, with the, um, uh, many of the prior approach, this uh, classifier-based approach, as I mentioned earlier, is that uh, they wrongly classify human-written uh, articles as uh, uh, AI-generated. So, well, because we, we are watermark-based, so we won't do that. So we, we, we won't have any false detection. So zero false uh, detection. Which is pretty good. We 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 evaluate on the, this uh, actually uh, student written uh, TOEFL uh, articles. Okay, uh, a quick summary of the of this part. Uh, we provide a, a robust watermarking uh, for this AI generated text. Uh, we provide uh, this uh, theoretical framework to analyze uh, the quality of the generation detection rate and the robustness uh, under uh, editing attacks. Of course, there are, there are more to uh, do in the future. Uh, I will highlight some of the challenges later. So the, the second part, uh, we don't have much time, but I will quickly go through the second part, which is also very interesting, is uh, how to protect the model. So you know, our first part, we want to protect the text. Now the second part is, we want to protect the model. Well, what do we mean by protecting the model? Well, suppose let's say Google, they have um, machine translation API, they have uh, open AI, they have this chat uh, GPT API. Uh, as a user, certainly they can just uh, uh, query this API back the synthetic generation and use that to train their own model. So this is called distillation attack. And well, we want to protect this. We, um, the, the key idea is um, we add some, again, we add some watermark to the model for the model's generation here. So uh, this response will be uh, watermark. And then yeah, if, the, uh, if they use this uh, generation task to train their own model uh, through distillation, this secret watermark uh, will be carried over. So uh, we will be able to detect such signal from the student model. So that's a key idea. And let's see how we, uh, how we do that. Um, I will start with a very simple model. It's based on BERT. It's just a classification. It's not a generation model yet. Uh, suppose we want to, let's say, um, identify the uh, sentiment for this sentence, so positive or negative. And I have a model, and I predict uh, the probability from this model. Uh, of course, maybe this one is, has high probability for positive class. And we can add some signal uh, to this probability so that this uh, probability will be slightly different. So you, and the, the, there are some hacks in the watermark signal, so you will be performing to a sensory signal. 
uh, and uh, corresponding to a particular uh, frequency with a, a, a secret message. And then later we are able to detect uh, uh, this uh, signal uh, signal uh, from the student model. So even if the student uh, uh, train, uh, uh, is trained from here, uh, this sinusoidal signal is still carried over. And how can we extend that to the generation case? So for generation, it turns out to be uh, slightly more complicated. Um, so the first thing we need to do is we, we still use the hash function to split the uh, vocabulary into two groups. We have group one, group two. It's a random split. Uh, we choose the hash function so that uh, this hash function will pretty much uh, uh, evenly split the two groups. And we also choose another hash function to map the input tokens, in input sentences, so that this input sentence will be mapped into a number uh, uh, between zero and one. So uniformly distributed. And now we want to generate. So let's say we have this prompt. Um, and we generate the next token. We, we first compute the probability uh, from uh, language model. We get that the raw probability. And then uh, the next step is we use this uh, hash, uh, hash value, hash function uh, corresponding to our secret watermark. Then we compute the secret sorry, the watermark signal for each of the tokens. Uh, and here, FW, there is a frequency. It's a word marking frequency. Uh, only, only we know that that's the secret we want to keep. And once we have that, then we apply this watermark signal on all the tokens. Uh, if it's in the green list, if the token is in the green list, we will adjust the probability of the uh, green list uh, probability. We add a, a little bit uh, uh, data here corresponding to this uh, computer signal. And we proportionally scale the probability for every word in, that, uh, in, the, in the first group and then and in the second group as well. So that's how we apply the watermark. And once we have that, we get the probability. We generate with new probability. We can use uh, Bing search or, or sampling or et cetera. So whatever decoding algorithm you want to use. And after that, we, we just output uh, the text. That's it. Well, how to detect? So uh, during detection time, uh, we use a probing data set uh, to probe the student model, so some suspect model. And we, we, we identify the signal. So uh, this is a signal processing because this uh, signal signal is in the original uh, watermark model. So the student model will catch this uh, signal signal. We will be able to so that's a way to detect uh, such signal. And so how's the well, how's the performance? So we we evaluate the uh, quality on the uh, this is machine translation task uh, for uh, WMT and IWSLT. Uh, comparing to uh, some of the earlier uh, watermark approach. Uh, so in terms of quality, uh, here, uh, uh, in terms of the blue score, uh, and the blue score for story image. So they are pretty much uh, similar to the prior approach uh, and sli slightly better actually in terms of quality. Uh, there's some small gap uh, from the original unwatermarked model. In terms of detection rate, there's huge improvement. So below is the uh, detection rate. 
Uh, it's uh, actually uh, about uh, very close to 90 percent of the about 90 percent uh, detection rate. So if you are curious, uh, what's the signal look like? Um, here's a one example or uh, two examples. So we have a negative case and a positive case. So negative case, which means that the, the model is not actually uh, distilled from our watermark model. So uh, here's a, uh, the probability uh, plot uh, after we hash the uh, text uh, along this uh, linear line. Uh, so this is a frequency domain. Uh, so there's no particular uh, spikes here. Uh, there are a lot of spikes, but not a single one. But uh, for this one, positive case, well, from the original uh, probability, it's very hard to tell. Uh, but the, uh, translate it into frequency domain, it's easy to tell the uh, secret frequency here. Okay, uh, let me quickly summarize uh, uh, this uh, watermark. So uh, our goal is to protect the model. So it's a uh, uh, chaining independent because we directly operate on the uh, chain model and the final output. So it, it doesn't rely on any ch chaining at all. And it applies to um, any kind of uh, model, uh, including this uh, transform or large language model as well. Uh, so it, it can be used for uh, soft label or hard label if you use uh, like uh, sampling to generate a sentence or or uh, hard bean search to uh, to generate a sentence. And it's uh, very effective and uh, scalable. Uh, there are other watermark uh, mass methods. Uh, developed uh, as, uh, earlier this year or, or last year. Uh, so this is a hot topic. Uh, and they are based on uh, different uh, approaches. Uh, we can talk about that uh, more uh, later in the future uh, after this, if you are interested. Um, some of the final thoughts. So this large language model are very powerful. We want to ensure responsible use. We want to ensure the uh, authenticity of the uh, generated content. Uh, the proper uh, protection of the uh, intellectual property, copyright, uh, the privacy, we want to protect the privacy. Well, I didn't talk about the uh, privacy for large language model, but we do have some work on the uh, differential privacy for LIM and the safety, uh, uh, hallucination, factual crisis. So there are a lot of issues. There, this is an exciting uh, research area. And there are a lot of uh, uh, Remaining questions uh, that's not answered and uh, potentially uh, ideal for uh, uh, future uh, research. For example, how can we uh, avoid this uh, uh, quality drop in the watermark model, especially for this uh, distillation? So we still see some uh, drop into the uh, quality. Uh, and what about the low entropy text? There are some use cases. So we do have low entropy text, for example, code generation. We don't have that uh, large vocabulary. Uh, so how to add a watermark? Uh, it's uh, unknown, yeah. And uh, other type of stronger adversary attacks. So what if the adversary knows green list? So we, 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 we can prevent some of that, but uh, not completely. And uh, uh, what about uh, the uh, 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 if the uh, attacker uh, try to guess the grouping, or uh, if the attacker try to in the distillation case try to mix uh, fine tuning uh, with the uh, uh, distilled data and extra extra data to, to chain together, so this can be a way to evade the detection. So the, all these are very exciting. If we are uh, interested in this, uh, I welcome you to work on some of these problems. So this is joint work with uh, my student, uh, Xuan Dong Zhao, and my collaborator, uh, Fuvenja, uh, Yu Xiang, and Kaoxin. So that's all. Thanks for a really nice talk. Um, I guess I have a couple questions about the need about 200 children to have a reliable voting market. 
I guess I'm curious how much that's affected by how much you're shifting those bits and how many the size of your your boards boards that you're shifting, and then also just how this performance vary if you go less than two hundred. Okay, great question. Uh, we don't have some study. We, uh, I, I don't have the thought. Uh, we don't have some study. Uh, yeah, we reduce the number. I think around one hundred, we can still detect that. Uh, but uh, below that, it's uh, very di difficult. Yeah. So that that would be another uh, future research question. So if we only have like one sentence with uh, 20 words, uh, can we still detect that or add a watermark? Right now it's hard. Uh, do you have any intuition for how likely it is that a LLM could pick this up unintentionally? Like not necessarily like directly and necessarily like that, but like somebody gets a new model and it has you know five percent of data that has been generated for the model. Do you have any idea how likely it is that it may be able to then unintentionally learn the watermark? Great question. So well, the question is really can a large language model accidentally generate this. Uh, watermarked text even without uh, being watermarked uh, explicitly yeah, right like if it, it sees it in training uh. because you know somebody generates a bunch of watermark data and it's out there and all of a sudden like if it's really sensitive to that it could be a problem yeah, that's a, that's a great question. So we do have some statistical analysis uh, where we, we can calculate the p-value of that. Uh, the chances are, we, well, depending on the hyperparameter we choose, we can set the hyperparameter in a way that the, the chances are really like one in, say, one billion or even, even yeah, less than that. Uh, so normally it's it's very unlikely. Uh, and also for human, um, can a human written text accidentally be watermarked? That's another question we, we're asking. So right now from the, as, as I said, so if the piece of article is longer than like a few hundred uh, uh, tokens, then it's very unlikely. It's for the watermark that um, for the strategy, matter much like the, the degree versus being certain differences. How does that interact? Uh, it, so right now it, it doesn't matter for, for the for the uh, first work on the uh, watermark of generated text. It, it doesn't matter. Uh, for the second one, it matters a little bit because there's difference between. If you just a sample from the probability versus if you do a bean search, there's uh, some difference. If you sample, your uh, word probability will uh, reflect the, the probability like better, while the bean search has a slightly biased. So there, there's some difference between the two, but in both cases, uh, you can work. Well, well, it seems like a watermark is only added in content, like it's not added in training. Like, we don't have the training at all. Oh, yeah, it's only added at expert It seems like really easy to make a watermark and then just change watermark to like one keyword on the like the Oh, that's a that's a great question. So can we change the watermark? Um, right now, I don't think we can. Because well, once, um, well, we, we can probably change, but then we, we still want to make a finite set of uh, the word marks. If we, if there are too many, if 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 we keep changing, like every day we have a new word mark, then it's hard to detect. Like, okay. When you want to detect, uh, when basically you you keep a database of your word marks, and then you identify whether this are article belongs to this watermark, another watermark. So we have, if we have like say one thousand what different watermarks, so it might spend more time to detect that. But if you only have say 10 different choices, yes, you can do that. 
I'm wondering whether like the detection of water water, especially is robust analysis of the robustness with respect to the kind of like for sort of tax to be taking into consideration the like actual realistic constraints that what you put on the uh, adverse attack itself. Like for example, the so the, the, the there's no like so we go of that of attack that just try to corrupt the order. Like if they want to follow some constraint like semantically the power base should be consistent with the original one and syntactically should be well formed, visible especially critical for like code models. So if we put that constraint on those for zero attacks, whether we'll actually improve the robustness of our like watermark strategy because those like attacks are uh, constrained by other angles like it's about syntax. Excellent question. So uh, uh, that means um, the question is really, uh, can we build some assumption uh, or attack model? And um, yes, if we have that knowledge, if we have some attack model, uh, uh, then perhaps we can do better in the detection. Uh, but again, so this is a cat and mouse race. So you, know, you have a stronger cat, you have stronger mouse. You know? So it's... Uh, yeah, you're, so we, uh, I think the uh, next uh, uh, research uh, direction is really to investigate uh, all these different uh, uh, models or paradigms of attacking and uh, study this uh, uh, robustness uh, against uh, each individual categories of the attacks. Next question. Uh, yeah, so this